Hello viewers and welcome yet again to another episode of Lunch Guide. I'm your host Chef Andy and today we are going to be making something really delectable, something some of you may not have learned to do already or rather something that some of you have already ordered out when you go out for a meal and you probably always wanted to find out what is the secret behind glazed pork ribs. Now we're going to start off the show by introducing the ingredients before us and then I'll show you how that very simple technique is achieved. So from the very front I've got some salt and some cumin powder. I've also got some oyster sauce and one pepper. I've also got some mustard sauce, one large, one medium sized tomato and some honey. You're also going to require about 600 grams of pork rib, about uh, uh, one medium sized avo, one large lemon and half a large onion, red of, or white. You'll also be required to have uh, one cup of maize flour some oil to cook with, some black pepper cones to crush, and last but not least, some water to make your gully in. But before we begin this short process, we're going to let you take a break now and freshen up, and we'll see you after a very short break. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you missed out the introduction to this episode, we've actually been introducing the dish of the day, which is a pork spare ribs. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a very, very simple guacamole to go with this dish. So we're going to start off the process with this beautiful cut of pork. So this is pork rib, but you can actually alternate that for anything between um, tenderloin. You can also get some very, very good chops for this particular recipe. It will work just the same. Now we're going to start this very simple process by place, uh, adding some oil to our griddle. Making sure to add just enough. Remember griddle just, it does come with this, uh, with, the, with the range right in the middle, which means the oil may not be able to touch the meat, but the design of the pan is actually designed to actually just design or rather put a beautiful mark on your ribs. So you're going to be able to see that very shortly. So for this, we're going to proceed to add to our pan. But of course, as you can see, there's all that excess flap underneath that you may actually have to trim. So we will have to do that first. So very simply with a sharp knife, proceed to take that excess flap of meat off. Proceed also to reduce some of this excess chunk that is right underneath your rib. Remember, this may actually not allow your meat to cook through very well. So we're going to proceed to trim that off first. Making sure to go right towards the end and proceed to trim sideways always making sure to have a nice even layer on both sides of your ribs. And of course it also accentuates the need for plating something that is also attractive to your diners. So we're going to proceed to allow that to sit at the back here. And very, very simply proceed to season with some salt. Turn, turn over your piece, proceed to do the same on the other end. And of course, very, very importantly, your black pepper cones. Remember, this really bring out the flavor of your meat. Also allows for you to get a nice, beautiful kick of heat, which actually also accentuates the flavor of your meat. Just proceed to do the same on the other side. Now we're going to proceed to grill this, of course, making sure to have the most curved side or rather the outer side to go down on the pan first because this will actually allow for the, for the rib to really get its shape. 
So just proceed to move that onto your grill and always placing your meat away from you. That way you also avoid any chances of burning yourself with the hot oil. Now we're also going to turn our board over. Very important to do so to avoid any contamination. And while that continues, I'm going to grab a bowl at the back. So we're also going, we're going to proceed to make our guacamole at this stage. So very, very simply begin the process by grabbing some avo. Proceed to take your seed out. And now using a spoon, proceed to scoop your avo into your sieve. Now the sieve is particularly very handy because it always allows you to get a nice smooth consistency and also allows for you to remove any foreign bodies that may have already been your avo. Now while pressing over your bowl, proceed to press your avo through your sieve, making sure to take advantage of the sides and proceed to mash completely. And one particular characteristic with some of the seasonal avos right now, they do actually have quite a bit of string. So this will always make it easy for you to get them out. And once you're done, very handy to turn over your sieve and using your spoon, scoop out the contents underneath. you can proceed to move that out of the way. Now we're going to proceed to chop up some of the other ingredients going into this mixture. And for that I will start by slicing some red onion. Proceed to finish off by chopping around the stem. And of course, proceed to even out the sizes with your knife. Now remember because of, uh, with, especially when cooking with cooking meat that's on the bone, you do have to give that quite a bit of time to cook so we're going to cook this in two different processes we're going to finish grilling this on the oven on the grill top and then we're also going to move it to our hot oven so for that i will also mention you will require some aluminium foil for that always makes it a little easier for your handling but now to finish the guacamole off proceed to add your onions to your bowl Proceed also to slice your lemon. And proceed to squeeze the juice of half your lemon into your dish. Of course using a sieve to make sure not to add any seeds to your guacamole mixture. And discard the rest. Now before I proceed with that, very handy to always check your meat while, it, uh, while it's on the griddle. So we're going to just lift that and once you get a nice beautiful golden color underneath, proceed to turn over and gently lay on the other side. Now that's going to take about another four to five minutes to, coat, to finish grilling on the bottom side and then we're just going to move that into a hot oven. But while we await that, Proceed to grab your whole tomato and while holding the tomato with the stem end at the base, proceed to slice that beautiful skin 
Remember, we are not going to incorporate the seeds into our beautiful guacamole, so we're only going to require the skin of the tomato. And you can discard the rest. And proceed to julienne that very quickly. And once julienne turns sideways and proceed to cube, Remember, very important to mention that it's very important to always have ingredients in almost the same size, especially if you're going to mix them together. Always gives a beautiful presentation. Just proceed to chop to the very end. And once that is done, proceed to add that to your bowl. And very, very simply, we will proceed to season with some salt and a small pinch of your cumin powder. And of course, some black pepper cones to always just lift up that flavor. So just proceed to mix everything together. Turning your bowl makes it very easy to get a nice beautiful consistency. Alright, once that's mixed through, we'll allow that to rest in our fridge until the time we'll need to serve this. So I'm just going to throw this in the fridge. Allow that to cool off. Always allow it and actually always taste it just tastes so much better when you actually allow it to rest. Now we're going to proceed to check for the browning of the second side of our ribs. And now that's got a nice beautiful color. We can now proceed to turn off the heat on the griddle. And we're going to proceed to move our beautiful rack of ribs into the oven. So very handy. Begin by grabbing your baking tray. And proceed to hold the meat right over the griddle allowing for the excess fat to drip and move that onto your baking sheet and you can now proceed to throw that into your hot oven and we are now going to allow that to continue cooking until the meat is fully cooked until the flavors have marinated really well into the meat and we've also got a nice beautiful even color we are going to take a very short break, but before I take the break, I will mention don't touch that dial. There's still much, much more for you to actually learn from this very, very simple show of ours. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, we are right at the last segment of this episode and I'm going to start the very simple, uh, I'm just going to finish off this very simple ugali. So already a pot, on the, a, pot on, a pot with some hot water already on the go. So all I'm going to do to this is add my flour in little bits. And using a wooden spoon, proceed to separate the flour and of course begin as well to break any lumps that may be in your flour. And just proceed to fold and turn as you continue. Of course, very important to mention, you should actually be on the lookout for any lumps while you do so, or any particular little pockets in there that may still have some uncooked flour. And ugali is actually a very, very typical dish here in Kenya, very, very staple. And I'm sure most of you probably already know how to make the ugali, so you can probably avoid the attention right now if you already know how to make it yourself. I 
Right now, all you need to do with this is just continue to fold and turn the mixture around right up until all your lumps are completely disappeared. Now we're just going to allow that to come to the heat and cook through. Remember you actually do really quite need to give it quite a bit of time to make sure that your maize flour is cooked through very, very nicely. And we're going to be turning that onto some aluminium and our ribs are also done. Now I'm just going to show you a simple technique of rolling your gully or rather plating your gully in a different way. So it's a very simple process. Just up until your gully is almost fully cooked, proceed to remove from the heat and move that onto some aluminum foil, placing it right at the center. And of course, always have some water running into your, pot, uh, into your pot to allow for the crust to come out very gently. And now all you need to do at this stage is just begin to mold and shape your gully. And what this will do, we're actually going to give it a bit of shape. Actually, it's one of the many techniques I personally like to use to aid in plating ugali. So very simply, once molded in, proceed to almost press it into a cylinder in shape and proceed to roll from your farthest end towards you and proceed to just press onto the sides and you can roll that on your board that should actually allow for you to get a nice beautiful cylindrical shape and we can set this aside and we'll plate that very briefly in the meantime, we'll proceed to remove our ribs from the oven. And if you can be able to get that beautiful close-up from the cameras, you can be able to see the color now. It's nicely, beautifully colored. You can almost see the bone, and the meat is actually also reduced in size. So it's one of the many particular signs for checking, especially when working with meat on the bone. So I'm just going to lift that very gently. And I'll just move that to my board and using a sharp knife, I'll just cut right through just for you all to be able to see the color on the inside. You can see it's a nice beautiful color, no traces of blood, which is a particularly good sign to make sure that your meat is cooked through. And all you need to do at this stage is proceed to move that onto your plate. Of course, always looking for a little bit of presentation. You can lay them stacked over each other as I've just done, or plate it your way. Wouldn't make much difference. And now remember, there's still a sauce that we have to serve this with. Remember, it is a very particularly dry dish, especially if you're going to be serving this with ugali. So onto a hot pan, I will proceed to add my oyster sauce. my honey and my mustard and I'll also just slit through one large red chili you can do that on both sides you can throw that in there and using a spoon at very low heat proceed to combine your sauce by mixing through now the reason why I actually just slice the chili is basically just to allow just enough heat to penetrate
and once that's combined you can proceed to turn your heat off completely you can also just throw in maybe two or three pieces which I'll do just for you to be able to see the difference in appearance as soon as the sauce is coated right around your ribs so just proceed to toss those of course always trying to scoop the sauce over your meat you can also slide it pour it uh, push everything to one end of your pan and proceed to just toss them towards that end and i'm just going to plate those aside for you to be able to see the beautiful difference once you actually glaze your ribs it always gives it a nice beautiful flavor always also brings out a nice beautiful color to your ribs and as you can be able to see from the plate quite a bit of a difference now I'm also going to take out the beautiful guacamole we did a little earlier just going to mix that through basically what we're going to do with that is just scoop that to one end of our plate so this works two ways, it can actually act as a dip for your ribs, it can also act, at a, act as a very savory sauce as well, something alternative to having uh, sticky ribs and it actually also is a very very healthy option as opposed to using most of the processed products that you may actually encounter when making your sauces. Now to finish this process off, we're going to proceed to unravel our ugali. And as you can see, it gives it quite a bit of a beautiful shape. So we're just going to try and slice the most beautiful parts, which are always the centers. And you can proceed to move those onto your plate. And you can reserve the rest. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my very simple take on uh, pork ribs with ugali and guacamole. I hope you've had fun today. I'm about to just dig into this very beautiful plate. I will bid you farewell but I will also remind you do check out our Facebook page, leave your comments, inquiries or any particular questions pertaining the show. We're always more than glad to hear from you but until the next episode, God bless and see you soon. Mm -hmm.